Hello again, Kansa. Uh, we've moved on from uh, some of the previous runs to Sword and Shield. Uh, with Longsword, I played a little bit of Longsword in the past, um, you know, for like Alatron. Uh I was still fairly new to it. Uh, Sword and Shield, however, is a weapon that I have completely learned for this fight. Uh, and so we are in the domain of, of weapons that I completely don't know how to play. Um, I will talk about the set and why I'm running Frostcraft and why I would maybe not advise you running Frostcraft in just a bit and again towards the end of the video. Um, but for now, I guess just a couple of things to keep in mind. Uh, as mentioned, I am not good with Sword and Shield. I am very, very new to Sword and Shield. I've played Sword and Shield um, for maybe like six hours over the course of two streams, maybe seven. I don't know. Um... And then I got this run afterwards. I'm kind of considering like editing together like the super cut of, 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 all, of our, all of our learning. But anyway, I learned Sword and Shield specifically for this fight. I'm still getting used to it. Um, so don't, if you see something that seems a little bit sus, then there's a good chance that it's sus. Um, that's kind of the punishment that I tend to go for with the uh, cone. I like to get there early. And if I think I'm early enough to like mash through the buttons and um, and uh, and get the, the final hit of the uh, of the flurry rush, I'm, I'm going to call it perfect rush. I'm going to call it flurry rush. Listen. Um... Yeah, if, if you can get the final hit, it's quite important to, um, especially the charged final hit. So if you need to mash through the first couple of hits, it can be worth doing. And that's because, generally speaking, Sword and Shield has a little bit of a tough time. It's one of those weapons that you really want to be going for the, uh, like, okay, you saw me go for it, then whip it. Uh, it's one of those weapons that you kind of want to be going for the chest. And if you've seen the speed runs, you'll probably notice that I am, like, baiting cones and focusing head. Um, as always, even though I am trying to speed run, at the same time, I'm also concerned with, like, putting together a fairly consistent run. Uh, a run that I reckon somebody who plays Sword and Shield a little bit more casually could uh, could let go for. And obviously we're getting a few more cones. Like, it would normally take us a little bit longer to get cones. And I, Guard Slash is the bane of my existence right now. I'm sure I'm just doing something wrong, but I keep I keep Guard Slashing. Thankfully, the game decided to uh, <laughs> to compensate me. But, um, yeah, so if you aren't aware, the first few hits of the... Ru oh, my God. Nice cones. Uh, the first few hits of the Rush are... They do decreased part damage. So, whereas with something like, uh, with something like Insect Glaive, where the Pogo does, oh my goodness, what is this first phase RNG, and I'm not even capitalizing on it properly. Uh, I guess this is the reason this is a good run. Uh, but yeah, you can see that I, I was thankfully close enough to get a, to get the full combo off. Um, yeah, sorry, so as I've been trying to say for like the past 10 minutes, uh, the first three hits of the Flurry Rush do uh, decreased part damage, sort of like the opposite of how Insect Glaive does increased part damage on its Pogo. Um, and so what that means is that if you, even if you focus the head entirely, like we've been doing with other weapons, if you're using a lot of rushing, uh, a lot of the flurry rush move, uh, you're gonna not break the horn. And so you'll notice here that even though we've hit pretty much only the horn, um, only the head there, you'll notice that we didn't get the head break. I'm just getting cold, I'm just broken coalescence. Um, you'll notice that we didn't get the horn break. And so I am heavily relying on the, uh, on like the ballista knockdown and like the, uh, uh the binders. Stuff like that to focus damage on the head. Generally speaking, the way I handle things is uh, if I can get at least one horn break, at least I'm not in constant risk of death. I don't normally go for the second horn break because it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit of an ask, you know. Now with the roaming ballista, if you can get shots on the head without like missing too much, so for example during the roars when I like to go for it, uh, try to do so just for the uh, just for the extra horn damage. As we were saying, it can be quite difficult to get the horn break, so that can be quite helpful. But uh, yeah, once we get the knockdown, uh, I'm not 100% sure what punishes I want to do here. If you are concerned with getting the horn break even quicker, what you can do is instead of doing the half rushes on cones, you can do the uh, shield bash. Um, shield bash, you'll get less damage, but you'll get more part damage because that doesn't have the negative part modifier. Um, so uh, keep that kind of thing in mind. Um, and do use the shy you can move to, uh, to tenderize whenever you need to if you can. Yeah, so uh, as for playstyle, we're going to be focusing the head as much as possible. Now, you'll notice I'm not 100% sticking to that with some other like with some other weapons where I'm pretty much universally only hitting the head. Here, I am happy to take uh, to take the chest if it's doing a long move that I can uh, that I can punish the chest with. But generally speaking, I'm trying to just make sure I get that first horn break before phase three, or at the very least with binder in phase three. Um, that initial binder that you use at the start of phase three, if that is what procs the horn break, then at least that's a little bit more acceptable. Um, you'll see we have Dragon Pods. I have experimented with using the Dragon Pods to try and chain into uh, Flurry Rushes using the Slinger Burst. I didn't have much success, but you know, your luck may vary. In terms of specific openings for first phase, uh, I am just basically going to be baiting cons. We, I, we've done videos on baiting cons before, be sure to check that out if you're confused. You can quite consistently bait the cons. We did get fairly good RNG here though. Um, like, even better than average. So, um, yeah, you can expect a run like this to take uh, maybe 10% longer as you're, as you're... Oh, okay, another guard slash. Good job, cons, you absolute clown. Uh, thankfully, we broke the horn, so it wasn't really a waste. 
Um, or it was a waste, but you know, could have been worse. Uh, anyway, first hornbreak has been achieved. At this point now, uh, I'm not going to bother going for like the uh, another hornbreak. Obviously, I'll take the head down while it's down here. Um, however, at this point, it's time to start focusing on the chest. Um, what am I doing? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know how to play sword and shield if that wasn't abundantly clear. Um, okay, so I guess let's talk about these set a little bit. Um, Frostcraft. Oh, and another thing, I'm going to struggle on final phase. Final phase is uh, is difficult for me. Because uh, as, with, as with other weapons that I'm new with, uh, I'm like very new for the matchup and for the weapon, but even more so with phase three, I have very little practice because, um, I mean, you can imagine if I abandon like every couple of runs or if I'm dying every couple of runs, I'm getting way more practice on the phase one and two than I am on phase three. So yeah, my phase three leaves a lot to be desired. But anyway, I am personally running Frostcraft uh, Sword and Shield because I tend to like err on the side of focusing the horns pretty much exclusively. Um... I find ample opportunity sh to sheath. If you play a more aggressive playstyle and you hit the chest, which is, like, in all honesty, like, available a lot of the time. Uh, I think I whiff this, don't I? Oh, no, okay. Um, if, if you play a more aggressive playstyle and you're hitting the chest a lot more than, like, like you should be if you want, like, a good speed run time, um, then you'll often find that, uh, that, like, Frostcraft will be empty for you a lot of the time. You notice that I delayed my hit there because I didn't want to uh, send myself flying back into the explosion. Um, yeah, so that's the reason I'm running Frostcraft, is because it helps with getting the horn breaks, and, and I, I don't know, I find that I'm not so aggressive that, that it, that it takes away a lot from me. However, it's gonna, it's gonna depend a lot on, on your, uh, on your play style. And generally speaking, running four, uh, four-piece Fatalis and, like, uh, I don't know, um, like the, uh, the Beta Valkana legs or, or head or whatever you're feeling, um, Generally speaking, such a such a, a combination would get you more defensive skills, more points of evasion window, uh, you know, the increased stamina, uh, more points of like recovery, uh, more points of everything, pretty much. Uh, just uh, and obviously more points of like the uh, the DPS skills as well, because with Velk you do sacrifice a few of them. Um, and in exchange, obviously you're losing the thirty percent frostcraft bonus. But in my opinion, that that is going to be worth it for like most players, especially if you're uh, if you play more aggressively than I do. Um, but for me, at least with my playstyle and the way I was handling the fight, I found this to be a, and you can see I'm really bad at punishing these things. Um, I guess, uh, yeah, I've talked about set, I've talked about, like, binders and stuff like that. Yeah, so, for punishes, whenever he does the tornado slash, if you get there early enough, you can start a flurry rush. Um, but be careful, because it is a, an extreme amount of commitment, and with, uh, with Valkana, because we are running Frostcraft, uh, that's another nice thing about running Fatalis. Because I'm running Frostcraft, I am um, I, I am in a lot of trouble if I get hit by his uh, by his flame breaths, specifically the tornado one where he spins around. That is pretty much a one shot uh, universally. Okay, I tried to I tried to shield into back hop there. I'm <laughs> have I have I said before that I'm new to sword and shield? Um, but uh, yeah, okay. So regarding playstyle, I'm pretty much only going for like half flurry rushes whenever I can. That's kind of my, my go-to, with the occasional little hit peppered in when I think I'm like close to a horn break or if I like mess up and I get a guard slash or whatever. Uh, advancing slash gives you like, oh, don't shield bash. So, uh, guarding slash gives you a surprising amount of momentum. Um, uh, I tried to do the, okay, I'm, I'm just bad. Um, advancing slash gives you a surprising amount of like forwards momentum, so so use that. Um, obviously shield into uh, into back of his really nice. And you'll see, whenever I get an opportunity, I go, I go for the... Uh, the half rush and I'll comp complete it if I think it's safe or if I think I'm close to like an opening. Um, I have noticed that if you're quite close to Fatalis or just in general, I've noticed that, um, oh, I I'm tanking the Nova here. If you heal right before the big hit of the Nova, you can survive it so long as you've broken the horn at least once. Uh, I did that because I, I got wind pressured and I was too far away to make it out in time, I, I figured. Um, but uh, yeah, you'll probably have noticed by now that, uh, okay, I I wanted to back up there. You'll probably have noticed that I... And I've completely forgotten what I was going to talk about. Uh, ah, I don't go for the... Uh, or when I do go for the finisher, often it, like, latches me onto the toes. Yeah, so I've noticed that when I'm, like, using the... Uh, when I'm doing the flurry rush or the perfect rush or whatever it's called, uh, I will very often get a... Uh, like, I'll, I will use the, the finisher move. It will, like, hit his crutch, give me a, an orange, like, a nice hitbox. But then launch me onto its toes. If you spend any amount of time fighting Fatalis, you'll know that the, uh, that the, that the claw hitbox down there is a little bit jank, and so it probably works on the same system. Um, yeah, it's quite inconsistent, and it can put you in a bad situation. So, in general, I would say err on the side of doing the half rush. I still haven't fully learned that lesson, which is why I go for it so often. 
But uh, yeah, err on the side of, of the half rush. Worst case scenario, you know, you, you get a little bit of extra time to, to do a couple of normal slashes or even sheath and refresh your Frostcraft gauge if you're using that. Yeah, I'm getting hit a lot, uh, as I said. <laughs> oh no, I'm going to stop justifying that. But um, yeah, this round would have been more in the region of like 14 minutes if, uh, if we didn't have such a lucky co um, cone RNG. Oh, yep, that's just bad play. Uh, such lucky con RNG. Oh man, we got completely lucky here, by the way. <laughs> why am I posting this run? Why, why am I posting? I'm, I'm sick of Sword and Shield, that's why I'm posting the run. I don't have to do any more runs with this weapon. <laughs> uh, like, I can consistently kill it with this thing in like uh, around 15 minutes at the moment. This was just a particularly good run. Actually, this was my best run in terms of skill as well, which is surprising, but maybe not given that I've only played this for like six or so hours. Um, yeah, it's like... Uh, half flurry Rushing just does so much damage that it's uh, very difficult to pass up. Um, you'll notice just how dangerous that was there, and that is because the uh, the Flurry Rush is a high commitment move. You've got to be careful. Um, I was using it there, and then it kind of uh, committed me to a move I maybe should not have committed to. I'm trying to think what else. Uh, I'm not using my mantles super efficiently. Uh, I, I usually just like forget to, to run them because I, I have so much, like most of my experience is like TA running, so I'm, I'm a bit lazy. Uh, I'm not going to deal with Fatalis, like, missing or, or taking a while to, to get to the right place, so that's the reason you'll see me. Ah, uh, okay, so the reason I clawed on there was because I, I thought it wasn't tenderized. Um, but then when I saw the uh, when I saw the little arm. Yeah, so generally, if you can land the finisher of the Flurry Rush on the chest itself, as opposed to, like, the, the crutch area that shares the same hitbox, you can more consistently get the, uh, get the good finish off. Um, but at least while you're going, while you're punishing cones and going for the horns, it can be, a, it's a, even more important to try, and, to try and land those when you can, just for the extra part damage. Yeah, uh, each of the uh, sort of initial hits of the Flurry Rush uh, do something in the region of like 30% part damage. Not 30% bonus part damage, just 30%. Um, uh, whereas the Flurry Rush does like 250%, uh, so it's, uh, the final hit does 250% if it's charged. So, uh, yeah, if you're, if you're going for Hornbreak specifically, you, you do really want to try and land that if possible. Um, and then once, we're, once we've reached the final phase after his final Nova, he's only got 5% of his health left. You know, just poke, pretty much. Um, finish him up however, however you feel comfortable. So, yeah, there we go. Somehow this was a 12 and a half minute run. I'll talk about the set in a little bit more detail in a second. I am really surprised how fast this is compared to, like, my other weapons. Uh, that's just a combination of Sword and Shield being really good. Um, and also... Uh, fairly nice con RNG in phase one. But uh, yeah, I guess let's talk about the set. I think I'll show the second page first. Um, so Resuscitate and Quick Sheath are both just from Velkana's set bonus. Uh, and Part Breaker is on my Evasion Mantle as always. And because I'm wearing the Evasion Mantle, it looks like it's a permanent skill. Whereas it's only temporary. And obviously Heavy Artillery is on the Temporal Mantle. As it is with all of my uh, all of these builds so far. Uh, in terms of actual skills here... Clutch Claw Boost is nice. It's a little bit less useful on Sword and Shield generally because you do have the uh, the Uppercut Claw. However, because you're going to be wanting to tenderize the head a lot, especially in Phase 1, and obviously it's like very difficult to get an opening where you can actually uppercut the head, um, I still find that that Shaver Jewel saves me a, a lot of heartache. But you can feel free to like run some more Handicraft or something else instead, or like co more points of Coalescence. Um, and Heat Guard is just for a final phase to make, uh, to make it less likely. Because of the negative fire resistance I have, his flame attacks already take me down to basically zero health. Heat Guard is really nice in that it um, stops the flames on the ground from killing me, but also by not having those flames on the ground damaging me, it keeps me in peak performance range when I'm at full health, which, I mean, isn't very often. Uh, and I guess the other thing on this page is the uh, the two points of evasion window. I'd like to run more, but it's Valkana, not Fatalis. And the Valkana Divinity, Frostcraft. It's the little blue bar next to my sharpness bar, which is giving me all this extra damage. As for the first page, Ice Attack is just, you know, a, a side effect of running the uh, the Valkana set. And everything else is pretty typical. I, I'm running max crit, obviously, to try and get to 100. Critical draw, again, is just from the Valkana set. It's not particularly useful for this, obviously. But um, it, it just happens to be there because I'm running Valkana for Frostcraft. Um, yeah, so I'm running crit, obviously, weakness exploit, critical eye at max to try and get to 100 affinity. The four points of attack boost are really helpful for that, too. Uh, five points of agitator, obviously. For this kind of thing. Um, as far as defensive skills goes, you've seen the two points of evasion window. Uh, health boost and recovery up are the two other skills that I uh, that I tend to go for. Recovery up comes from the set, from the arms nicely. Uh, three points of health boost are manual, and then obviously the rest I put into uh, evasion window. 
Two points of handicraft I found was enough to stop me from dipping into white sharpness. I could probably have afforded to uh, run less. Um, however, if you're running for Talis, obviously you're you're probably not going to need any handicraft because of uh, true razor sharp. Um, other than that, I don't think there's that much to talk about here. It's very typical DPS skills that happen to come with uh, either a combination of what I wanted or what comes with the uh, Valkana set. And then the second page has had uh, some miscellaneous skills. Yeah, do let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully you found this helpful. Um, uh, I do plan on doing the uh, the edited uh, Sword and Shield like uh, from, from zero to, to this run maybe at some point in the future. So keep an eye out for that. But uh, yeah, I hope you have a lovely day. Take it easy. Bye-bye.